when you're leading other people, your people will probably do maybe 50 or 70% of what you do. So if your accountability level is here, your people, their accountability level is probably going to be somewhere below that. Mm. And so you have to realize that you are setting the standard. Yeah, that's cool. And if you set a low standard, just expect your team is probably going to be below that. Because if you're setting a low standard, anybody on your team who is, is performing above that, they're not going to be on your team very long mm -hmm. because they're going to realize this environment doesn't have room for me because if you're here and your people are here, they're going to be leaving soon because they're going to be like, hey, no one's leading me because my leader is behind me. That's it. <laughs> and no one's going to want to stay in that environment. And I, and I think for a lot of leaders, the frustrating part for them is when they are leading is how do I create something simple that allows me to hold people accountable on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. Now, the next part I want to talk about, it, and this part becomes frustrating for leaders is, all right, we, Terrell, I listen to what you said. We use the golden age. We set the goals. There's an average good. There's an excellent goal. We have the reviews on a regular basis. Like we meet with the staff m monthly to talk about their goals, but I'm still seeing gaps. Mm -hmm. Like they're still performing under average or they're still performing at average but i know that they have more potential like it can be very frustrating as a leader when you know that your people are better than what they're currently doing so as a leader how do you how have you approached that in the past and then i want to talk about how you approach it now now that we utilize the golden age I'm laughing because when you said underperforming or they're under average, I'm like, they need to be fired. <laughs> I'm like, they need to be fired. Um, okay, so in the past I probably have approached it okay, I'm not gonna lie. Under average, fired. Like that's that's okay. Mutual separation, let's say it that way. Um and I think there's uh yeah, so mutual separation and I think it's worked well for us sometimes because I think it's just like, hey, if you're not a good fit, and sometimes I think I also had to realize what you said was very, very important, that in that area, I didn't set an example, a good example of what great looked like. I didn't set a good example of what average looked like. I didn't set a good example of what excellent looked like in that specific area. So in some respects, I had to take accountability and be like, all right, I haven't really been clear or I haven't set this person up for success. Yeah. That's kind of where I am now. Before I would have just been like, all right, they're the problem. This isn't working. You know, maybe time for you to go find something else. But I think now it's more so the idea of like, okay, this is a, I'll take it this way. This is, have I done a good enough job to give you what you need to be successful? Mm -hmm. Like in that case, if we're, if I'm giving you constant feedback and you're still under performing, I think for me, what has helped is to say, okay, and I'm going to use like an actual example is this is what the expectations are. And we have a conversation about it and I'm saying, hey, where is it that you need my help to get better in this area, right? Like, cause this is not sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. So if it's okay, I'm struggling with this. These are the areas that I need to learn. Okay, we're gonna give you the proper training to get better in that area. And we go through one month, we evaluate your performance. It's not getting better, okay? Second month, we, we say, all right, what, what is it? Mm -hmm. And in some cases, to be honest, it's just, it's this, this role is not a good fit for you. And I think a lot of times, you know, sometimes when I had an employee a couple of years ago where they really struggled in a specific area, in a specific group, in a specific role, mm -hmm. and they were underperforming. And what I had to evaluate is a lot of times it's not that people are lazy. It's just their skill set doesn't match with the role that you've put them in. Gotcha. And when I moved them to another role, they actually ended up being the top performer. It was something completely different, didn't have really a lot to do with like the accounting, the technical stuff. And when I moved them to that role, they ended up basically getting promoted to manager eventually in that role. So sometimes it's a question of, all right, if the person is continuously underperforming mm -hmm. and they're below average, is it a skill set issue where the, where they excel and what they're good at, if there's specific parts of the goals where they are above average and they're doing well, okay. Is there room on my team mm -hmm. to maybe give them other responsibilities where they can excel more and be a better asset to what our overall goal of the business is? Yeah. 